Join us here in Brussels as the esteemed entrepreneur Nicholas van Gelden prepares to address the major players in international business. Assisting him, a small sheep called Plops. Everybody got to be called something. Ladies, gentlemen, we are here to discuss the future. Your future, our future, our children's future. I have a dream, ladies and gentlemen, and not the sort of sordid dream you'd be ashamed to share with your therapist. No, my dream is one that sees the world working in harmony. I see every region of the Earth, the United States, Europe, Japan, or as I like to call them, the big boys, trading with the economic minnows of the world, Africa, Latin America, and some other places I've forgotten the names of. <clears throat> my point is, there are flesh markets to share. After all, this is the era of globalization. And here is my vision. You cretin plops. I'll deal with you later. Deal with me? <laughs> Oops! <laughs> How did that get in there? <laughs> Put simply, my vision is of a world trading freely with itself. Here in Europe, we are very close to imposing, uh, sorry, <laughs> I mean finalizing some trade agreements that will facilitate economic exchange between Europe and the developing world. No, they won't. Yes, they will. No, they won't. It'll just see rich Western countries getting richer while developing nations remain poor. <gasps> <laughs> Very amusing, Plops. What a tease he is, ladies and gentlemen. I must have him round for dinner. He can be the main course. Well, I'm just pointing out a pure codswallop you're speaking, mate. <laughs> Ignore him, ladies and gentlemen. His mother was a ewe. And he's a little sheep. Back to my vision. A vision where big business rules the world. To achieve this, we need global market access for our companies. For starters, I want to remove import taxes on both manufactured and agricultural goods. A brilliant idea. Why, thank you. Plops. But an immoral one. Because by removing import taxes, you will cause a surge of cheap and sometimes even subsidised goods to flow into a country. The poor farmers will be unable to survive with such competition. I'm sorry, Plops. I was under the impression that I was speaking! You've hit the nail on the head there, old boy. Did I mention I want to open up services for international competition as well? Good show, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Tourism, finance, energy, transport, water, to name just a few. Makes sense. Yes, it does. But only if you're dead inside. Because <laughs> European companies will go into countries and outcompete local businesses, destroying the opportunity for a poor country to stand on its own two feet and develop a strong economy. Prices will go up, and the poorest will not be able to afford even the basic services that they need. Where the hell am I? Right in the way of a heavy shovel, mate. What shovel? <laughs> in fact, I think everybody watching should be made aware that you were trying to stop poor nations from using the very same policies that the Western nations successfully used to build up their economies. No, I <gasps> Don't listen to him. He lives in a field. Ooh, uh... These deals will just make the poor poorer and the rich richer. Want some proof? Well, let's look at Mexico. Since the first Mexican trade deal in 1994 signed with the US, two million agricultural workers have lost their jobs and many have had to leave their land. Overall, economic growth rates have fallen. It's a bloody mess. Take the Mexican financial sector. Foreign banks now dominate the country, raking in billions in profits. None of it goes back to the local. No, no. <laughs> but that's just only Mexico. All right, well, let's discuss South Africa then. 
What is it with all this bloody dancing? More than one third of South Africans live on less than one pound a day. And I suppose that's my fault. The trade agreements Europe signed in 1999 simply exploited South Africa's weak bargaining position. Since the deal was signed, South Africa's trade deficit with Europe has actually worsened, threatening jobs and local working conditions. Come now, please, let's not dwell on these grisly tales from far off lands. There's no need to be arguing the toss like this. Life is short. Surely we can all move forward together? You're right. We can. I am. Yes. You just don't realise it because you're too busy lecturing people to do as you say, not as you do. In my defence, I am a wolf. Exactly. And I might only be a cretinous sheep. But even I can spot injustice when it comes to Europe's proposed trade agreements. They are simply unfair. Trade can help lift millions of people out of poverty, but unfair trade rules are ripping off the poor and filling the pockets of the rich. They amount to nothing less than robbery. A great trade robbery, if you will. <laughs> that is why I want everyone watching to support the World Development Movement's call for trade that puts the needs of the poor first. Why not investigate a little further yourself and see what you can do to help? Now. How about we stop bickering? Hit it!